Hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Bagush, Monster Killer. Here at the bottom of the residence hall, we see Monster Killer's stalwart army. They wait patiently, eagerly, because a great battle will soon commence. Frenzied shrieks echo throughout the entry hall. Hundreds of goblins and vile beak dogs are streaming towards the fortress as we speak. Their goal? To end our fortress. Will they succeed in their task? I'd certainly like to think not, but I guess you never know. Before this siege arrived, I thought we could easily repel any attack by those damn goblins, but unfortunately there were some oversights in the way our pressure plates were set up, so these trolls cannot set them off. We'll have to wait for the goblins to show up. The plates are more tuned for their weight. On top of that, I had already ordered this ballista bridge to be lowered, and that does not seem to be working, unfortunately. Another nail in our coffin? Let's hope not. But on to more pressing matters. Here we see our brave military commander, Ainad no Kimisan, currently overexerted, laying on the ground next to a couple of deceased trolls, and unfortunately more trolls are moving in. I'm not sure how good I feel about her chances, but I guess we'll see. Well, are we ready? Hang in there, Ainad. Let's see how this plays out. Unpausing. Alright, the trolls are moving in. Come on, Ainad. One of them just fell down. They're both on the ground now, and it looks like she's attempting to crawl away. Nope, she's moving back in. She's up against the wall now. One of the trolls has fallen unconscious and has died. There are some more trolls now moving down the hallway, and she just dispatched that one she was fighting. Alright, two more trolls just moved in, ready to fight. One of them's on the ground. The other one just took a hit. I not can't even get to her feet, she's so tired. Alright. One of the trolls is unconscious. The other one is on the floor. They are both unconscious now. Good job, I nod. One is down. And the second is down. Fantastic work. Alright, now it looks like she's heading down the hall. Don't go that way, Einod. Get back to the fortress, will ya? I just took her off duty. Hopefully she starts to head back. And she's not. Fantastic. I don't know where she thinks she's going. Oh, now it looks like she's heading back. One of the trolls has ran away at the sight of her. <laughs> Fantastic. Both those trolls, actually. Alright, that is good. Go ahead, Einod. Back to the fortress. <laughs> Good fighting, Inod. Alright, looks like the ballista bridge is still up. What a pain, huh? I don't know, well I do have two levers linked up to this bridge. That might have screwed it up, I guess. Ugh, such a pain. I guess I'll just try pulling this lever here again. And we do, by the way, have that crocodile bridge and those spikes linked up to levers as well. We might have to resort to using those if the pressure plates don't seem like they're working. It looks like the trolls have regained their courage and are now moving in. Fantastic. They should be mowed down promptly by our military. I'm not too concerned. Oh hey, would you look at that? I pulled that other lever and it looks like the bridge went down. Well, that's good. Okay, so it looks like the ballistas are ready to go. We'll have to wait for a mass of goblins to round that corner down there, and then we'll let the arrows fly. Really hoping for the best. Oh, and hey now, I had forgotten that we're also starting to fill up the water cistern under the well now. Very cool. And once that's filled, the crocodile pit will start to fill up. Very exciting. It looks like round two of the invaders have reached the bottom of the rampway. Bring it on. You know, you really just gotta appreciate the fact that the trolls start to panic whenever they see the corpses of their dead brethren. <laughs> Very amusing. Anywho, super annoying here. It looks like a group of trolls has found its way into the old fortress and is now destroying coffins that I had set up here, as well as memorial slabs. Those rat bastards. Oh, they're gonna pay. Don't you worry. Oh boy, I wasn't looking for a second. It looks like the majority of goblins and beak dogs have reached the fortress level. Ooh boy. You know, I really want to go out there and fight them, but I suppose if we can get them to fall down in the crock pit, that'd be pretty cool too. Hmm. I'll tell you what, we'll wait for the front half of this group to move off the crock pit and then we'll trigger it. Cause you know, I just realized that I had set these pressure plates to be triggered by something that was between the weight of a goblin and a human. So a goblin riding a beak dog is much heavier than that actually. None of these pressure plates are going to work. Damn it. Alright, and it's looking like the front half of that group is pretty much off of the crock pit. And so what the hell, let's do it. Pull the crock pit lever. Someone should be on their way. Let's watch. Oh boy, a little late on the draw, huh? Oh, but there they go. <laughs> go get them, crocs. Fantastic. And it doesn't look like those crocs are doing too bad, really. But unfortunately, we can't watch down here. All right, and since the crock pit seemed fairly successful, these invaders have no way out now, other than if they were to go through the fortress, but I don't think they have a great chance of that. Oh, damn it. I was just about to set these ballistas to fire, but it looks like the trap makers are running around panicking. I guess they must have caught sight of the trolls and beak dogs out there. Ugh, what a pain. I should have put them farther away, I suppose. Damn it. 
How are we doing, warriors? We're holding back those beak dogs and trolls well enough, but the main force is on its way. Brace yourselves. My main concern is that one of these military dwarves is going to go run down to the entry hall. I really don't want that to happen. Work together, dwarves. Come on. Don't be fools. Ooh, man, I was really hoping someone would fire one of these ballistas. Oh, here comes a dwarf. Although they're very badly trained, and we do have military dwarves out in the hall now. Uh, screw it. Okay, I tell you what, nobody's going to fire these anymore. Far too dangerous. All right, the game is paused. We do have a couple of military dwarves out facing this giant siege now, and I'm going to have the rest of the military move in. Let's do this, dwarves. All right, those few dwarves are moving in, fighting. They're going to be out of luck, though, unless their comrades get here soon. That's a lot of goblins and beak dogs. Come on, dwarves, get in here. All right, there we are. Some of the dwarves have gotten to the hall now. Keep coming, dwarves. There we go. And battle has begun. Hold them back, dwarves. Slay them all. Yes, the dwarves seem to be fighting rather well. Keep it up. We have a long way to go. For Usheng Bagush, keep pushing. Starting to realize how many more goblins and beak dogs we have to get through. It would appear that there's widespread disarray amongst the beak dogs. They're panicked, not used to fighting in such cramped quarters, I guess. Very good. That'll work out in our favor quite well, I'd imagine. The dwarves seem to be making progress moving down the hall, leaving heaps of mulched goblin carcasses in their wake. Very good, very good. The beak dogs in the front line seem to still be panicking, and it looks like the back end of the siege is trying to escape. I don't think so. I am noticing now that the crocodile bridge has reclosed, and I will reopen it. We don't want these guys escaping. Some goblin must have stepped on one of the pressure plates. We're almost there, dwarves. Steal yourselves. Come on, damn it. I don't know why the crock bridge didn't reopen. Eh, whatever. Not a biggie. The dwarves seem to have things well handled. <laughs> That's right. Get out of here, you damn goblins. All right, and you know what? We chase the goblins back up into the entry hall, and so I'm going to take the army off duty for now and send them back to the fortress. I don't want to lose any more dwarves than we have to, you know? Good fighting today, dwarves. Very good fighting, actually. Oh, one troll left over here. <laughs> yeah, we can take him out real quick. Good work. And here the bastards go. That's right, crawl back into your holes. I'm sure they'll be back before long. Ugh, that is all of them except for these damn trolls up in the old fortress level. Yeah, they're asking for it, huh? Oh, it looks like those damn trolls are trying to get into our museum now. Like hell. You stay out of there. Come on, dwarves. Our artifacts are in danger. Oh, you rats. They took the door down, making one hell of a mess already. Oh, and here come the dwarves. Yeah, you trolls are in for it now. That's right. Do you regret it yet? Say, look at the mess you're making with your blood all over the place. That's very rude, you know. There we go. Those trolls are no more. And now there's only a couple of invaders left down here in the bottom of our crocodile pit. <laughs> Unfortunately, our cave crocodiles didn't fare so well, but they didn't do so bad either. Their loss will not be in vain. Remember, we have a torrent of water heading towards the crocodile pit as we speak. These guys don't have much of a chance. Just gonna take some waiting. Now, I suppose we could turn off the burrow. Everyone back to work. That actually seemed like a fairly good siege, if I say so myself. Especially considering our traps didn't really work as I had expected them to. Yeah, not so bad at all. We only lost four military dwarves in that fighting. Three of whom were the Griffins of Steel. Those poor guys. We really should modify our trap hall so that they have a better chance of survival. I have the distinct feeling that half the time the Griffins of Steel are running in and clubbing goblins with their crossbows. Which, you know, probably isn't like the best use of a crossbow. I'm thinking, I mean, what do I know? But yeah, we'll get to that shortly. Because uh, right now we actually have an enormous mess to clean up. Yeah, I mean, damn, would you look at that? Ugh, those goblins. I'll tell you, really made a mess out of things. But no matter. I set up a new corpse pile out here in the caverns. This will make things a little bit easier to clean up. And after it gets full, I'm just going to have the dwarves dump everything off the cliff here. Not sanitary, but meh, whatever. <laughs> Back to the siege. Really, all things considered, that was a very successful siege. We only lost four dwarves. I mean, considering how many invaders there were. Yeah, that's not so bad at all. Oh, and here's our reward, I guess. The forgotten beast Uthimi has come. A huge, scaly tarantula. It has a twisting, jointed trunk, and it squirms and fidgets. Beware its poisonous bite. Ha! I laugh at you, Uthimi. Forgotten beast indeed. All right, well, let's see where it is, I guess. Kind of an interesting area, actually. It's on the second cavern level with the new fortress. In fact, it is very close to the new fortress. 
The creature really just has to head down a mossy slope and then it's here at the meeting hall. Not mm, the best news, really. Um, okay. Well, if it's coming for us, we're gonna be ready for it. Uh, I'm gonna get everybody on duty. The creature's gonna be here shortly. I'm sure we can get soldiers to this entrance in time, but I really don't want anybody fighting on this ledge. Um, well, I'll just send them here for now, how about? We'll see how this goes. If the creature's moving to the south, not really going where I expected it to go. All right, now it's heading back to the west and down the slope. I think it's coming. And it looks to be heading back up the slope now. Kind of peculiar. Yeah, I don't know, this creature seems a bit confused, really. Oh, you know, re-examining this slope. It looks to be cut off by the branches of this tree here. Yeah, this beast can't get to the fortress. Hmm, all right, well, I don't really feel as safe ignoring this one as I did those other two. Just because this one is a spider, I know it can climb. And there are a couple of open areas where it could easily climb down a cliff face. So I think I'm gonna try to cut down this tree here. All right, here comes the dwarf to cut that tree down. It should be taken care of shortly. There it goes, following the beast, who is moving in towards the fortress now. Possibly, maybe. Yeah, very confused. Oh, here we go. The creature is fighting, taking some hits, and it has fallen. Easy as that. Not even a notable combat, really. Except for the fact that the creature was killed by having its abdomen smash against some sort of an obstacle. I believe it was pushed off a small cliff or something, and probably landed on its abdomen, and the part split into gore. Pretty gross. I suppose that would account for all the spider slime all over the place. Well, good fighting, guys. I didn't think that was going to be a bad fight. Uh, however, if we want to talk about something particularly irritating, something that has caused a lot of trouble, though, just recently, uh, is this, this crundle up here. There's actually a pair of crundles up on top of the walkway that leads to the meeting hall. These little bastards. You can see here I'm currently trying to dig a way up to them because we really have to take care of them. Well, because as you can see here, the dwarves seem to panic at the sight of those tiny, clumsy creatures. And instead of doing something intelligent like running in the opposite direction, or perhaps retreating into a chamber, the dwarves have opted to uh, go climbing up the cavern walls just really high. Which, you know, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, there's a couple idiots out here right now. And actually, you can see here there's a couple of carcasses on the ground, as well as another wounded dwarf. Yeah, so the dwarves climb up really high in their panic state, and then they fall, and then they die, or get seriously injured. That's not smart. Ugh, you know? Alright, so we lost four dwarves to that siege earlier, and two and a half to crundles. A pair of crundles. That is ridiculous right there. Anyways, keep digging, huh? All right, and there we go. This is so ridiculous. Oh, here comes a warrior. One and two, they're both dead. Fantastic. But not before losing a third dwarf. Uh, I mean, <laughs> dwarves, come on, what do you want me to do? They're crundles for God's sake. <sighs> okay, well, seeing as how we have three new corpses here, as well as this big old mess of bodies up in the old fortress, I think it's time to start thinking about a new memorial hall. What do you say? Uh, it's certainly about time, huh? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's see a memorial hall. I don't think I'm gonna want it too close to our meeting hall. It should be a bit farther away. It's not really a place that our dwarves are gonna be checking out on a daily basis, you know? So, huh, let's see. All right, now I'm looking down at our farm area here. And if we head over to the left, we have this slope. And you can see at the top of that slope, there's a pair of doors leading out into the caverns. All right. And I'm thinking we put memorial hall right in front of those doors. Just right here, we're gonna make a path. And we'll have it lead back quite a bit. Back and down, perhaps. And we'll start carving it out here, on the same level as our maintenance tunnels. How does that sound? And I'm gonna make it fairly huge too, I'm thinking. More like a catacomb. Alright, and that'll do it right there. A nice spacious memorial catacomb. Room for plenty of dwarf carcasses, which is fantastic because we certainly need it. I hope it's big enough anyways. And the idea is that in each of these alcoves I'll put a coffin. Or perhaps a memorial slab. Yeah, I think that should work out pretty cool. And over to the left there you can see that tunnel leading off. That's gonna lead to Queen Obok's tomb, but I don't really have anything planned up for that yet. Not too worried. She's not going anywhere. And I imagine it's gonna take them quite a bit to get that all carved out, because we are still trying to get our barracks in decent shape as well. And seeing as how the goblins have already come and left, and I'm hoping they won't be back for a while, I think it's time to open up Usheng Vagush's meeting hall as a tavern. I'd say the dwarves here have a pretty strong grip over the Born Dunes. We're really making our mark here, and the world has to know it. So it might be nice if we get some outside visitors to come in, see the place, check it out, spread our stories. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I like that. Oh, hold up a second. We have a new artifact here. 
Ral Febdeg, the gut puller, has created Bomelaneth, a sleek, forgotten beast leather lobu. He claims it as a family heirloom. Very cool. A forgotten beast leather boot. Let's have a look. The Remarkable City. <laughs> okay. This is a sleek, forgotten beast leather low boot. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is studded with lead, decorated with giant bat leather and pigtail, and encircled with bands of cave spider silk and tunnel tube. This object is adorned with hanging rings of giant bat leather and menaces with spikes of forgotten beast leather and nice. On the item is an image of Negative Comet, the Constructive Treason, the diorite figurine of Zephon Ceiling Paints, in claystone. That's an artifact I believe we created here in Ushang Vagush. And there's also an image of Thela Flower Swelter, the Elf, and Kaduzum Oakenfire's the Sand Titan, in gold opal. And the Titan is again striking down the Elf. Boy, the dwarves really seem to like pass around the story of that Elf being killed by the Sand Titan. It must have been an interesting event, huh? I imagine they're hoping that Titan will show up at some point. I mean, we've had such great success with killing those forgotten beasts. They know they can take it, and I have full confidence that they will. A fantastic artifact. Back to the meeting hall. Yes, I believe now we're going to turn this into a public tavern. There we are, we'll designate this large area as our tavern, and then add location in slash tavern, and the default name is Breakfasts of Mightiness. <laughs> Let's rename it, shall we? How about we randomize it a bit? I do enjoy doing that. The Arena of Weight. Nope. The Born Gold. No. The Dimpled Lenses. No, 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 no. Eh, these are all crap. <laughs> I'm just playing around here. Um, but the name I've come up with is... <laughs> oh my god, I could never pronounce this. Etagasdasastisitan. Oh my god. Etagasdasastisitan Edad. <laughs> Which translates to... The Big Bad Dune Hall of Feasts. Which I know sounds a bit ridiculous to us humans, but you know, maybe it sounds a bit more intimidating in the Dwarven language, you know? <laughs> I guess I had started it off as a joke, but I think that's what we're gonna have to go with. Yep, we're doing it. And let's see here, our new tavern's going to need a tavern keeper, and a performer would be nice as well. Hmm, let's see here. How about you, Rackust? I got some decent social skills here. You'll be our new tavern keep. Congratulations! And now we still need a performer. How about you, Saigon? Alright, there we go. All set. Welcome one and all to the Big Bad Dune Hall of Feasts. Finally open for business. Very good, I'll have to keep tabs on whether or not we ever get visitors. I have my hopes up. And so yeah, now we wait. There are so many things to get done in the fortress. This whole mess here, carving out the new catacombs. Just gotta wait. And so I will be right back. Oh, well, hey now. Our very first visitor, Mesim Ursa Kaspa, a human poet. Very cool. Welcome to Ushangbegush, human. Pardon our mess. Just trying to tidy things up a bit, you know. <laughs> but besides that, looks like the rock biters have started work on the catacombs. Coming along rather nicely. Very good. Oh, and the barracks is looking pretty good too. Got a bunch of spare boulders laying around the place. But we'll get those taken care of before long, hopefully. Oh, and here's something fun. I forgot about these bastards who are caught in the bottom of our crocodile pit. Just kind of scurrying around down here. Well, that water is on its way slowly but surely, and eventually it will start filling that pit, which is fantastic news. That being said, a bunch of the bastards are climbing up the sides of the pit wall. That might screw us up a bit, but no worries. Oh, hey, look, this is pretty cool. Looks like Queen Obak is telling a story currently. Let's have a look at that. Yep, here she is in the meeting hall, telling a story for all to hear. That's very cool, and I'll bet it's a good one too. Oh, it's actually kind of a depressing story. She's talking about how Lycott, Venomblood's father, and the captain of the guard here in Usheng Vagush ceased to be the captain of the guard, which I imagine is when he was killed in combat, quite a few years ago now. And I'm sure she's also mentioning how brave he was in combat, how he died fighting for the fortress. It's pretty cool that his legacy can live on like that, especially in a story told by the queen herself. Yeah, very cool. And also, if we have a look here, we actually have a couple of other visitors in the fortress now, including a human lord consort. I'm not sure where they're from exactly. And he arrived here by himself because he was curious about the big bad Dune Hall of Feasts. I mean, who wouldn't be curious, I guess? And the other new visitor we have is a Gorlak crossbowman, which is fascinating. The only Gorlaks we've seen in Ushengvegu so far are the ones wandering through the caverns. I figure she's worth having a closer look at, what do you say? She is a small, round humanoid found wandering the caves deep underground. Most of her body is taken up by a huge, tusked mouth. She is incredibly skinny, her skin is goldenrod, and her eyes are red. And also, from what I understand, they are considered to be good creatures, and intelligent too. And some dwarves even like Gorlax for their stimulating conversations, as well as their helpful guidance. 
which is really interesting. But yeah, she's just hanging out, listening to Obak's story. Yeah, I think it was a good idea to open up our meeting halls at Tavern. Good to see some new faces around the place, you know? Oh, hey, cool, another artifact. Raoul Arustazir, the gut puller, has created Nar Isos, a crundlebone mace. She claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor Aiden Castle Weavers. Fantastic, another bone weapon that's our third in the fortress. Well, let's have a look. The Rawness of Dales. This is a crundlebone mace. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with pigtail and encircled with bands of beak dog leather, silver, llama wool, and round slate cabicons. This object menaces with spikes of copper. On the item is an image of Aslot Comet Demons, the Goblin, and Boot Risky, the Giant Jaguar, in Crundle Bone. The Jaguar is killing the Goblin, which relates to an event that happened here in the Born Dunes in the year 245. And there's also an image of Kulor Dead Fates, the Troll of Shadow, and Dwarves in Rutile. The Troll of Shadow is surrounded by the Dwarves, which relates to the rise of this monster here as an enemy of the Grand Lancers in the late winter of 20. Very interesting. A couple of particularly cool images on this artifact. Plus it's a weapon, which is always awesome, and it's made out of bone, which again is totally awesome. Oh, hey, I missed it, but we had another cool event here in the fortress. I was just looking at the combat log, and it looks like a dwarf and child got into a fight with a giant cave toad, which is no joke, really. A giant cave toad is about the size of a llama, and if we have a look here, it looks like the toad attacked the child, who punched it twice, and the toad took a second attack at the child, missed, at which point the child punched the toad in the head, knocking the giant cave toad unconscious. And also, the blow was so hard that it tore the skin on the toad's neck. Quite impressive. Oh, and I suppose I should also mention that this kid is four years old. Just a little dude. And I guess I should also mention he beat up that toad on his way down to our old memorial hall. You know, where all the dead bodies are. In order to play make-believe by himself. That is one hardcore kid right there. By the gods. Things were going so well, too. But a great darkness has returned. The where tapir Athifi Nawira Iki has come. A large tapir twisted into humanoid form. It is crazed for blood and flesh. Its eyes glow red. Its sandy taupe hair is long and wavy. Now you will know why you fear the night. Oh no, this is awful. We all remember what happened last time we got attacked by a were tapir. That was in the very beginning of the fortress too. When we had very few dwarves, now there are dwarves all over the place. The were tapir is up on the surface over to the east, along with a few of my dwarves including Bomrek the Explorer. Really, all things considered, there's not that much we can do. I'm guessing the smartest thing we could do at this point is to lock up that top entry gate so that the creature can't just run down to the fortress, you know? Not that I think it's going to do that, but I guess we'll see, huh? I'm gonna take this slowly. Unpausing. Alright, the beast is running up to the north, chasing the Explorer. Following the beast, chasing the Explorer, I'm going to pause the game here, and I guess I'm just gonna have the Explorer try to kill this thing. I mean, it's basically on top of him. We don't have a better choice. Good luck, Bomrek. Following the beast once more. All right, Bomrek's moving in. He's taking hits, and he died, damn it. Yeah, that really stinks. I had high hopes for that guy. Real high hopes. Oh, and the beast is moving in towards some more dwarves. Come on, get out of there, you idiot. Oh, no, he's out of luck. Ooh, yeah, that tape is really giving it to him. And they're dead. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Well, come on in, I guess. Gotta love that, huh? All right, I'm sending all the dwarves underground. Let's go. And hey, maybe those goblins can take care of our wear tapir problem here, huh? A wear tapir that's moving in towards the fortress. Great. Oh, and they turn back into an elf and they're running off. Good riddance, you bastard. Oh, and would you take a look at that? She has the look of an Ilialetha elf. Scarlet hair, aquamarine eyes. Those bastards. So they come in here complaining about us cutting down too much trees. And then we get attacked by a wear tapir? Who looks an awful lot like one of their kin. No, no, this can't stand. This must have been planned, right? Oh, those damn elves are in for it next time they show up, I'll tell you. The first stone is thrown. It's war, elves. But anyways, go scurry back to your tree home, you scum. We have bigger things to worry about, apparently, because the Frosty Barbarity has returned once more. For the second year in a row, really amping up their game, it would seem. Come on, dwarves, hurry the hell up. Get back down to the fortress. Oh, you know, this siege isn't really looking too bad. Certainly not as bad as that last siege. They have a bunch of trolls, no beak dogs, a lot of armed goblins once more. Yeah, less than three full pages of invaders this time. Hmm, feeling pretty positive about it, actually. And unfortunately, some of the civilians are still trying to get into the fortress. They might not be able to get here in time. I'm a little concerned about that, especially with these trolls being as fast as they are. 
I just don't want to lose any more dwarves than I have to, you know? Come on, dude, keep running. The trolls are right behind you. And they are moving in quick, too. Oh, hey now. Looks like there's a plump helmet man going up the entry hall. <laughs> You're gonna be out of luck, buddy. But hey, at least he'll slow him down a bit, huh? Hopefully. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take long at all. Barely slowed him down. All right, looking down here, it looks like the last peasant has crossed the threshold into safety. And so I'm going to close up this bridge here. Lever is pulled. And the safe hall is closed off, just in time. And we'll make sure to close up this forgotten beast pen as well. I'm really looking to let none of these guys escape this time. That's our goal. And now we're going to assemble the sand blades, the brass spikes, and the rough lovers. Not the griffins of steel. They didn't really do so good last time, so eh, I'm gonna leave them out. And we'll assemble them here at the bottom of the residence hall once more. That seemed to work out pretty alright last time. Also, take note that I got rid of all the pressure plates in this hallway, and these traps are only controlled by levers now. After that fiasco last time, eh, I figure we shouldn't rely on them as much, which I know people have been telling me, but I still like that additional challenge. Ooh, wasn't paying attention, we have a troll moving up into the residence hall now. Uh, a panicked troll. A panicked, wounded troll, who's now dead. Fantastic. Hey, now we have some more trolls moving in. Ready, dwarves? Of course you are. <laughs> and here they come. And there they go. Not even a slight challenge, really. Oh, but damn it, we just lost a dwarf down here. Adil Anolitus. Not a dwarf you'd be familiar with, but they've been our hammerer for quite some time. He must have been caught off guard in the barracks down here. Well, you'll be avenged, my friend. No worries. Now this troll is wrecking the barracks. Not gonna happen. Your turn to be caught off guard, you bastard. There we go. Well, here come the first couple goblins. Surprise! Not even a slight challenge. All right, there we go, the crock pit is open. So the goblins here can no longer escape. And I'm gonna try to open up that ballista bridge real quick and fire off a couple quick shots. I'm not sure if it's gonna be successful, but what the hell. All right, bridge is open, I pause the game. Fire at will, trap makers. There they go careening down the hall and into the goblins and seemingly missing them entirely uh okay well you know that's about right why be awesome and stuff when you could just fail completely you know well i guess we're doing this the old-fashioned way get in there dwarves all right and here they come out into the entry hall as a forgotten beast lumbers into the caverns all right give me a second here buddy we're kind of in the middle of some stuff. Yes, the warriors are moving in, more and more joining the fray. There are so few goblins here. These guys don't stand a chance. Move in, dwarves. Wipe them away. Easy enough. Hardly notable, really. And we will close up the crock bridge once more. Oh, but we're not going to be able to get out there in time. Looks like these goblins are trying to go back up to the old fortress level. They'll be able to escape out into the caves if they get there. Eh, oh well. Although what is pretty interesting is that if they get up to the old fortress level and try to escape out through the caverns over this way here, that's actually just where this forgotten beast is. Hmm, very interesting actually. Well, hopefully they run into each other, but unfortunately we won't find out until next episode. And don't you give me any flack about this being a bad cliffhanger or anything. It's certainly not as bad as that last one. Good fighting dwarves. We've really proven today that we can defend this fortress successfully, having put down two goblin sieges with little problem. And I'm thinking next episode, we finally go on the attack. I am sick and tired of those goblins pushing us around. But anyways, I would like to take this chance to welcome my new subscribers. I got about a thousand this past weekend, which is just wacky. And yeah, welcome aboard, you bearded bastards. I hope you all enjoyed watching this episode, and I certainly hope you'll join me again next time, here in Ushengvagush. Monster Killer! And until then, you bearded bastards.